Welcome back boys and girls and today I have something special for you. One of my fellow YouTuber Jeans Armory loaned me his Swiss K11 carbon for me to do a review on it. Look at that, this rifle is in excellent condition and he brought me the whole package. Chick riser with extra ammunition holder, a bayonet. This is awesome looking. I'm telling you man, this is heavy, very solid and very scary. Brought me a bunch of ammunition and the Voltex Diamondback scope, beautiful aluminum bolt handle, and even a fast loader. And he installed a scope mount. So I have a little bit of work, but let me get everything back together and then show it to you. But first, let's do a review on this rifle. Now, at first I thought this was one of those old classic rifle, but more I research on it and more I look at it and work it, this rifle is truly ahead of its time. Very well made and very well thought of. So let's talk about that as we review the rifle. First of all, you could see the wood stock from the bus stock and almost to the end of the barrel. So this is very unusual for me, but I can't believe this held up this long without any problem. Now the barrel inside is 33.3 inches, but what's really ahead of time technology is that this barrel is actually free floating. And as you all know, free floating has become really popular in recent years because of its accuracy, but they've already done it more than 100 years ago. And it also comes with a muzzle cap, so you could keep the dirt and the mud and everything else out. And if you pop it open, I don't know if you can see it or not, but the muzzle is also crowned. And the rear sight is adjustable for the longer distance. And you can actually have it from 300 yards all the way up to 1500 yards. So that's pretty crazy. And I'm sure you see many of the barrels that's been fluted to reduce the weight. And they already put a groove in here on the top and down here to keep the weight down but have the strength on the chamber. And the part that I am really impressed is that this is straight pullback bolt action, which was way ahead of its time. I don't know if you know or not, but Ricinius Browning is making a straight back bolt action for the fast follow up shots. And the bolt release button is also really convenient. Just pull that level down and it comes right out. Now this looks a little bit unfamiliar to us. It's very long and heavy bolt, but very efficient. If you see the groove here, this is what makes it possible for us to go straight back and forth and that handle right on the groove locking and making it possible. Another crazy thing is this has six rounds detachable magazine. Yep, you heard me right, detachable. Press that, pops right out. I heard that this magazine is really easy to fit. Let's see how easy it is. Wow. Wow, that was really easy. I didn't feel almost any resistance to its maximum capacity, which is six. Now let's try the fast loader. He told me he was able to find this on eBay for 30 bucks. Whew. That was crazy fast. And there's another hidden technology here. At the last shot, this boat will not move forward, letting the soldiers know that they need to reload. It's empty. Another thing that I'm really impressed is this two-stage trigger. Wow, <laughs> that's crazy light. I have to say it's less than three pounds for sure, maybe two and a half. Compared to military specs that we have about six to seven pounds, this is like customized trigger. So you have flooring barrel with a hair light trigger. That's a combination for accuracy. Now this comes with a hot plastic bolt action handle. On the upgraded model, which is K31, that is replaced with aluminum handle, and I have that with me. Overall length on this rifle is 44 inches. Let's check the weight. Now with a heavy duty scope mount, this weighs nine pounds and six ounces. Now I heard that without the scope mount, it should weigh less than nine pounds. Now one thing that I cannot believe they did to this rifle is this safety system. Honestly, that's the dumbest thing that I've seen in this rifle. At this point, if you don't print the safety, you gotta pull this back, turn and twist it like that. Then it's in safety, you can't fire. Now this is comfortable, right? 
But now if you put it in fire like this, this huge ring here will not let your thumb go under so you can't really get this nice grip on it. Now I heard that they made this so you could have a heavy glove and still operate the safety. But I feel like if that ring was turned the other way, at least you could have your thumb underneath, just like here. Now, just like that, you've been a lot easier. Also, this has the ejection port on the top, so when you work the action, the empty shell is gonna fly straight up over your head. Which a lot of people thought that was a bad idea, but actually, I thought that was a genius idea because in those days during the war, soldiers get themselves into a bunker and they stand in line and firing at the enemies. Now, problem is if you have an ejection port on the side, you're gonna have empty hot shells flying toward your buddies next to you. But having the empty shell fly over your head, you're not interfering with any of the soldiers. I honestly think that's a great idea. Only problem is you can't really mount the scope on top. So as you can see, Jin's Army put a scope mount on the side. The only problem is beyond 300 yards, you want to have your bullet flying a little bit to the left and then dropping. Now this rifle is ultimate war machine or killing machine. And let me tell you why. Here's the bayonet. He told me he paid $100 for this. If you look at it, this is double-edged sword. And it's really, really sharp. I would hate to be at the other end of this. Now there's a release button right here. Look at that, that's crazy. And if you look at the bus stop, that's all metal. So either you're gonna stab somebody or crush somebody's skull with this. It's beautiful, but at the same time, scary. All right, let's wait the bayonet. It's one pound and 7.6 ounce. I'm really looking forward to go out and do some shooting with this, but let's get everything set up first. Okay, I'm done with the scope. Now, one thing that I noticed is the rear side actually touches the scope. So I put it right at the edge, so that's not a problem. So scope is set just a little behind, but I think there shouldn't be any problem. But if anybody wants to do it, you should use a high profile. Then you could clear that real sight. And also the empty shell is going to fly straight up and it might actually hit the windy turret. So I put the front ring right in the center. So when that empty shell flies out, it's going to hit that groove and then pop out this way without hitting the windy turret. Or at least that's what I'm hoping. Okay, let's take a look. Wow. It does feel a little bit weird because I'm so used to having the scope right in the center and having a little off to the left. It does feel a little bit weird, but I guess I could get used to that. More I handle this rifle and more I try to understand the design and the purpose of its functions, I am really, really impressed. Except for the safety. I've never been into a battle, so I might be the one who's having a short sight on the safety. But again, really impressed. Okay, I got the chick rest. Now the only problem is because the scope is off center, this chick rest doesn't really help. It's actually better without it. So I'm gonna remove that and put on what I really need, which is a recoil pad. The metal bus stuck against my shoulder, I don't think that's gonna be a whole lot of fun. And the new handle looks awesome. Okay, I got the limb saver on and we are ready. Again, I really wanna thank my buddy Jeans Armory. Okay, he brought me two types of ammunition. One is surplus and this I believe is commercial. And this is brand new in the pack. And he told me I could open it. Man, I'm getting a little excited. Oh my my, wow. It looks like a pack of cigarettes. It's got 10 rounds inside. I think it would have been better if this was 12 rounds since magazine holds 6 rounds. Alright, let's take a look. Wow. This is in an excellent condition. I've never seen a surplus ammunition this clean. So I'm gonna compare both of them and see the accuracy. I'm gonna both side the rifle and hit the range. Okay, I have a problem. I'm trying to both side in my scope. I have a target about 30 yards and my barrel is pointing right at it. But my windage turret is maxed out. And you will not go any further to the left. I'm gonna try to reverse the rings. I tried to flip the front and rear rings differently and I think I got it. Hopefully that I'll be able to zero in. Okay, I can't believe I figured it out, but that combination actually worked. I just hope this will work at the range. The bench is six feet apart, so we don't have to wear the mask on the bench. I'm just gonna have it over my mouth. 
Okay, you could see the flag behind me. It's windy today. We have about 20 miles an hour wind, but I have time today, so I'm out here. I'm gonna do some shooting with the K11, and we'll see what happens. Okay, the scope is little off center to the left. Now, having a detachment magazine really helps, especially when you have a scope on top. It's just hard to fit from the top. Okay, I'm gonna be shooting at the lower target at 25 yards and try to set it in. Okay, this giant ring here definitely gets in the way with my thumb holding the a pistol grip. I'm taking my first shot, let's see what it feels like. Woo! Now it does feel like it's got even more recoil than 308. It's more like 30 or six. Perfect. The shell didn't fly out, it fell off the side. It's got a long pop, but trigger is really nice. Now one thing that I noticed is that trigger guard is really large in the back, so that hits my middle finger. So you want to hold a little behind because that's going to hurt a little bit. I'm almost centered. Okay, this is 25 yards. That's the first target, and then that's the final adjustment. That's last two shots, so that's really tight. It's a little low, but at 100 yards, it's kind of actually very really high, so that's fine. And first, I'm going to start with the surplus, and it's cold out today. I'm going to take three shots at 100 yards. I'm going to be shooting at the left upper target. It's centered, a little high, but not bad. Second shot at the left upper target. Third shot. At that time, it's touching the bullseye, but I tell you, it's kind of wide. Okay, I'm gonna take three shots with this right upper target. The first shot was way off the three o'clock. Second shot. Third shot. Death center. Okay, this is a hundred yards. It's not good as I want it to be, but it is what it is. So that's with the surplus ammunition and that's with the commercial. I really want to shoot better like under one MOA, but this rifle being over 100 years old and not knowing how this gun was used by how many people. And I seen somebody shooting like a quarter inch MOA with this rifle. So I really can say my shooting represents the accuracy of this rifle. And looking at the crown, there is a little bit of damage. Now one thing that I've seen a lot of people make mistake is that they have their rifle upside down like this, work on their guns or whatever. So one of the biggest effects of your accuracy is the muzzle and the crown. If you damage that, the accuracy is going to drop. The barrel here looks fine. And it could also be the off-center scope, because I've never shot it like this before. But just to be fair, I'm going to give it a good clean and go back out there on a better day and try the accuracy again. Okay, today is a much better day. Hardly any wind. And it's nice and warm. It's it's in the mid 60s, so, so the temperature is perfect. And I clean my belt, so I'm just gonna squeeze it off one round into the dirt and then go for the three shot groups again. I could tell right now, you're gonna need a recoil pad for this. This one has a hefty kick. Surplus ammunition, left upper target, and I'm gonna take one shot every two minutes. Oh, right next to the bullseye. Second shot. It's tight. Okay, I have two exceptional shots, and this is my third shot, and I'm getting a little nervous. <laughs> that went a little high, but it's still very exceptional. I always put the third shot. Okay, this is 100 yards. Hana to his head. Okay, my best three shot group today was with surplus ammunition, and I got one and a half inch. Considering this is over 100 years old rifle, and only God knows how many people handled it. Shooting one and a half inch group, is very exceptional. I really believe if this rifle was broken in properly and maintained well, shooting half inch group at 100 yards shouldn't be a problem. And lastly, like always, thank God for what you have, enjoy your life with what you got, but mostly remember, times might change, but the great rifle never does.